They're not interested in our fees. Good evening. It is 5.30 p.m. on August 12th, 2020. This is the special meeting of the San Juan City Council. I now call this meeting to order. Um, okay, for the record, Council Member Shannon Williamson, Deb Rule, Joel Espiro, John Darling, Kate McAllister, and Amy Brett are present. Council Members Williamson and Rule are participating remotely. So now let's go to the meeting. Yeah. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, well, now, um, well, the purpose of this meeting, this evening's meeting, is a workshop and discussion between the City Council, myself, and City staff regarding the proposed City Fee schedule. There will be no final decisions made tonight regarding any of the proposed fee changes and public comment will not be taken. A public hearing will be scheduled and public te testimony on public comment and public testimony on proposed fees will be accepted at that time. Additionally, a public forum item is not included in this evening's agenda, but will be included on the agenda for the next regular council meeting scheduled for August 19th. City Administrator Jennifer Stapleton will now lead us to the workshop. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to be fairly brief on this item tonight and um, hand a lot of it over to Amanda. Melissa, if we could pull up the staff report on this, I'll just kind of give a summary of the changes. And most of our changes are in the planning and building area. And so Amanda will get into more detail about that. Our fee schedule uh, as presented to council this year um, includes three new fees, one of which really isn't new, um, but hasn't been on our, our schedule before. Uh, the first new fee is an expedited processing fee. Uh, this is in the area of um, building and planning permits. If someone wants expedited processing, um, this is typical with, with what other cities are doing um, to get a faster turnaround uh, if possible. Um, with a building and planning permit. The second fee is a community garden plot fee. Um, we've actually had a fee for our community garden plots. Our current fees are $20 and $30 um, for an annual plot. And um, it just has not been on our central city fee schedule. That is an, inadvertently, it was not on our schedule. So we are proposing an increase to the garden plot fee from $20 to $25 and $30 to $35. And again, this is under new fees from the simple point of, for some reason, it was not on our central fee schedule um, at, at the city. Um, I would also now relative to the community garden that we are looking at uh, improvements at that uh, site uh, at some point later this fall to include uh, irrigation at the Dubs ninth grade field, which will include upgraded irrigation at the community garden area as well. Um, as I mentioned previously, we have a um, basically a thorough restructure of our infrastructure and development services fees. We had committed to council last year. Uh, that we would come back with an overhaul of our fee structure uh, for this year. And I'll hand that over to Amanda at the end to kind of cover the what and the why, the reasoning behind that, and give you some examples on what that means for a single uh, family residential development as well as for a subdivision. Uh, on our proposed fee changes, we have an increase uh, to our tourist home short-term rental fee. And uh, this fee increase covers the our direct cost for our software that we use for management tracking and reporting on the short-term rentals. So this is a direct cost to the city that we're passing along to um, the short-term rental owners that participate in this program. Uh, we have included an increase in our per ticket fee at uh, Memorial Field. Um, currently, uh, our fees are a uh, dollar for Lake Ponderay School District events at the field 
and they have been a dollar twenty five for festival events at the field. We have um, we're proposing a fee that's consistent for any event at the field where um, they would be charging an entry fee that is a two dollar per person entry for the and that would go into our capital fund specifically allocated for future capital improvements for War Memorial Field at the stadium replacement. So I would remind council that we have been doing a set aside annually for field replacement at War Memorial Field. We actually started that two years ago. So we'll be adding to that again this year, but um, this will assist us with the difference in the revenues to ensure that we are not at a point 10 to 15 years down the road where we have deferred maintenance on the field and no way to replace. Um, finally, uh, our fee change is to our addressing and road naming fee. I would note that this is 100% um, a pass-through fee from Bonner County through the city um, to, uh, to new developments and uh, developments where there is an address or a road name uh, change. And this is a Bonner County fee. We were able to negotiate with the county. We do some of the front end work with this and notifications. So this is half of what the fee is for um, anything else with an address or road naming fee in any of our surrounding cities or in the unincorporated county. So, um, but it is a significant increase from our previous fee that was a, again a pass through fee from the county adopted at the beginning of this calendar year. With that, unless council has any changes on uh, any questions on changes or new fees other than infrastructure and development services, I'll hand it over to Amanda. I did have. Jen. Council online, do you have any questions? Councilwoman Rule, did you have a question? Looks like they both do. We can't hear you, Deb. Both muted. <laughs> we can't hear you. You're muted. <laughs> nope. Keep trying. She got unmuted and then she was muted again. All right, am I there now? I'm on mute. Can we can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. Now I just have to find my, oh, goodness gracious. I had questions about, there were some things about like watershed usage fees and some other things. Are we discussing all that now or is that when public comment happens. Uh, any questions that you have on fees would be now, but I would suggest let Amanda go through her presentation on infrastructure development services because those fees will be under IDS, specifically if you're asking about watershed. Um, yeah, I was, there was some sidewalk things, a watershed thing, and then some re-roofing things. So will she be covering all that? Yes, all Amanda. Okay, perfect. I'll wait. Thank you. Sorry. No problem. Councilwoman Williamson, did you have a question too? Okay, it's all you. All right, thank you. And I'm going to keep it relatively brief so that we have plenty of time for your questions um, so that I'm not going into too much detail on something that was already um, self-explanatory. And do you mind if I share my screen? Is that okay? Okay, so the presentation that I have for you tonight, um, all of the content is identical to what you have in your packet. It's just on this screen, there's been some color changes and I have some additional notes for the presentation is what you're seeing in front of you. So on the top section, we um, memorialized, if you will, and included for clarity um, rates um, associated with um, city employees and our charges for that um, for our administration versus our crews 
hourly rates as well as equipment and materials. And I think before I get into the weeds of things, I um, feel it's important to mention that really where all of our overhaul in infrastructure and development services came from and is rooted in, in our fee structure this year is it's been many, many years since we've had an overhaul of infrastructure and development services fees or previously public works planning and building um, many years. And so when I um, came on board just over two years ago, um, there were some, some elements that frankly were a bit confusing to me coming into the city new. And as I've continued to watch and learn over the last couple of years, it's clear that many of the elements are also confusing to our customers and result in some surprises. And so we've made an effort collectively as um, a division to overhaul many of the fees, not with the um, intention of increasing them. That wasn't the focus here. It's really about restructuring them to improve clarity and to um, improve equity where it made sense. So in some areas, um, I think there are ways in which we can better serve our citizens by applying a fee that makes more sense than what we've maybe charged in the past. And so that's kind of a lot of the information you're going to see tonight. And I thought an introduction to that would be helpful. Um, in our process of determining what to propose, we really did a thorough analysis of not only costs to date and time to date on these various types of applications and permits that we use, um, to ensure that we're relatively recouping our costs, but also what are other municipalities in our region doing and how do we compare to them? Is it more expensive or less expensive to get permits here? We also looked to um, areas that are outside of our region. I will say less of them, but you know what, what are they doing in places beyond just North Idaho that maybe we could learn from as well? And so what's in front of you this evening um, and what's going to be proposed for your approval is really a collaboration of all of that um, there are some common themes throughout the industry, if you will, about how people charge for things. And there are examples of where municipalities do it in just a completely different way. Um, and so I would just overall say that there's not a one size fits all um, in most categories. In some categories, there absolutely is, and there's a reason for that. So I'll get into the weeds of it. Um, again, the, the top section you see in front of you, the gray, is just providing that if there is a fee reference within infrastructure and development services that says cost plus 15%, the costs are what is represented here in the gray. Those are our hourly rates, or we're letting people know if we're charging you for equipment, this is how we're determining the rates for charging you for equipment. And that is an industry standard, um, which is the rental. Can you see that okay? Kind of, let me zoom in a bit. So instead of the hard numbers, you're actually just gonna get the cost plus. Yes. How would you feel that those would be associated to those hard numbers? Associated to the hard numbers. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, if, the, if you take the hourly rate plus 15%, how would they rate to the existing pricing? Sometimes there's not existing pricing for it. So it's a good question. More often than not, we prefer not to do cost plus 15. We prefer to set, here's your fee. This is what it's going to be. Where that comes into play is really in two areas. Where we have external costs that we can't foresee what that's going to be. So there isn't an established fee for it. Um, so for example, um, historically, we have never had a fee for reviewing a traffic study. So right now, we're not charging anybody to review a traffic study. We have to outsource that to a consultant because we don't have a <clears throat> transportation engineer in house or too small of a municipality to have one full time for that. So we would charge the invoice amount of that consultant plus the 15% to administer it. So there's not really a comparable fee on that. The second area in which we would use that that you'll see down below and I'll go into it is if we have an, um, a unique situation, meaning site conditions for let's say a water connection that is abnormal than what we would typically see. And maybe we need to, for example, bore underneath a road and we need to hire a contractor to do the boring underneath the highway or whatever it might be. Um, we could charge those actual costs and then recoup our administrative costs versus having a fee that would establish what boring is, right? We, we just are unable to predict all of those various situations. So, 
down below when we get into water charges, you'll see that there are opportunities where if the condition is unique enough, we'll charge cost plus. But more often than not, we have an established rate for whatever service or permit or application that you're proposing. Does that make sense or did I answer it? Yep. Okay. So we included this up above um, from an efficiency perspective or what we thought was efficient. Um, let me just shrink this so we can see more here. There we go. Um, because finance helps us, Sarah helps us um, assess these hourly rates um, based upon our average costs and that's based upon per year. So in future years, if this hourly rate is changed, we're not changing the entire fee structure below it. It's just captured up above. That's clear. So as far as planning goes, um, there, this is a complete overhaul of how we've handled it historically. You can see we had our various application processes line item and itemized. What we're proposing now is that we strike all of those and really for the most part, anything in bold on the screen, by the way, represents a new um, structure or a new fee, is that we have really three categories. If you're having a planning P and Z application that's coming to the city, for processing. Um, all of these fees include processing it and the two review cycles. So typically we get application content, we review it, we give you comments, you incorporate those comments, we review to make sure you incorporated them. That's what two reviews mean. So back to the flat fee versus cost plus 15. So a minor application would be, it's just an administrative approval and there is no, the code doesn't require that it goes to the P and Z commission or to council. It's just something that our staff is able to process. That flat fee is proposed at the amount shown of 480. So it's a three-tiered system. The next tier would be a major application that's only considered by P and Z. And the third would be a major application considered by P and Z and council. So these flat fees were based upon um, the amount it should take staff to review that application and to process it. Right, so some projects are gonna be more complex. Some projects are gonna be less complex. What we have historically done, as you can see above, is often based upon, base our fees on the scale of a subdivision, for example, so the number of lots. In this case, um, this in many, many situations is gonna be a fee reduction because a very large subdivision, if your subdivision has 78 lots on it, Really, it shouldn't take us, in our opinion, more time to process a 78 lot subdivision than it does a 22 lot subdivision. The number of lots on a piece of paper really shouldn't influence how much time we take to review it. Um, and so that was, um, without going on for a really long time about how we came up with these, that was really the nexus for how we came up with the flat fees um, and the different categories for them. Some fees stayed the same as you'll see there. We also have never had a floodplain certification fee and we offer a floodplain certification and it's actually required by FEMA. So that um, is proposed at 120. Pre-application meetings, we're just noting um, that there's no cost for one meeting up to an hour. Thereafter, um, it'll be charged actual time. The mechanical uh, fees primarily stayed the same. Um, the commercial and industrial fees are consistent actually with um, a resolution that was adopted when all the other mechanical fees were um, adopted. It's just, um, it was previously not included on our fee schedule. So it is now included, but those rates are the same. The, the building fee valuation and charges for um, in the past, that, as you can see, is a pretty substantial overhaul. We used to have, and it's been this way for many, many years, um, we used to go into a very micro level of detail on building permit fees. And in looking at nearby cities, uh, we found that most simplify this. So you had individual line items for thousand dollar increments all the way up to 50,000 previously. And then when you got above 50,000, it boiled 
down to five different categories. So we've simplified that. Um, these values that you see, the amount and the structure is identical to Hayden. And then I guess it's worth noting at the beginning here, I apologize. For those of you that don't know how building permit fees are calculated, it's based upon the valuation of the permit of the construction value, which is based upon a national table. So we look at the type of construction, the, um, the usage. So if it's a single family home, is it commercial, is it industrial? And then this national table provides the average, it's truly an average square foot cost for that type of construction and that type of use. So for example, if you had a 2000 square foot single family home, like many that you see in town here, the table would provide that that value is 244,920. That's the construction value, not what the home is gonna sell for, just the cost to build it. Um, and then this fee schedule, you would go to the line item on my Excel spreadsheet line item 128. So the value falls between 100,000 and 500,000. So the permit for this for a 2000 square foot residential home, the actual building permit when calculated would be $1,854 and 99 cents plus a plan check fee of 65%, that's per building code, that stays the same what it's always been, of an additional 1,205. And then you have the um, planning fee, which is a reduction I would like to point out, based upon the building permit value of 10%. So I'm sorry, I'm gonna jump back up for a second because I think it's important to show where we have reductions as well. So when we receive a building permit application, we're not only reviewing it for building code compliance, we have to also review it for um, setback requirements and, and Title IX is what it is, um, requirements. So we've historically charged for a single family home site plan review, in addition to the building plan reviews that I just mentioned, $451.50 for up to 4,000 square feet. In this new structure, the example I gave you, we're only charging 10% of the building permit fee. So for a 2000 square foot home, we used to charge you $451.50 for a plan check for site plan review, site plan review, plus a plan check review of 65% of the building fee. We now only charge you 10%. So in my example, it'd be $185 versus $451. So that is a savings for a standard home. Said I was going to simplify this. I feel like it's really complicated <laughs> as we're talking about it. Um, and then there's many things that it's just very difficult to calculate the value based upon a table. So most municipalities set a minimum building permit fee and ignore valuation. And those examples or those items are listed here below. So for example, a, a fireplace, you know, retrofit or um, a foundation repair and a retaining wall. So those will just be charged a minimum building permit fee. So that's instead of calculating the value um, based upon the table. And the minimum permit, the minimum building permit fee is proposed at $150. So I said you need a, a permit to review your own roof. Reroofs Re um, do require a permit, a building permit, yes, per building. Oh, that's right. You're not even on council. Then that may be exempt from a building permit, but typically, like a true reroof, does require a building permit. So again, uh, building plan check fee. So you have your building permit value, but you also have a plan check value. Um, building code requires that that's 65% of the calculated um, building permit fee. A couple other um, reductions in fees I would note. 
would include um, if you have a your plans prepared and stamped by a registered licensed professional and it's a single family home um, up to uh, nearly 8,000 square feet, then we have a reduced plan check fee of 25%, 25% because our level of effort in reviewing what an engineer has stamped is less than what it is when an engineer is not stamping the plans. There's no plan check for a re-roof, so you're not charged the 65% on top of that minimum. What about if you're building the same home over and over and over again? I love that you asked that question. So this year we are proposing what's called a residential repeat or subsequent lot plan check. It's a lot of words. Essentially, um, you bring up such a great point. If we have, for example, a subdivision that has 50 lots on it, but there's only five home types that are being proposed, we review a full plan check on those five different types of structures. And then what we're proposing here is that everyone after that is only the 25 is only 25 percent per lot of the same instead of the full 65 percent that is new we have historically charged that 65 percent on every single one even though there's really not truly uh, any review to be had it's just always what our code set or our fee schedule said so that's what we had to charge Do so have a question um yeah sorry to go back but um the part with the door and the window did you speak to that with the, um, what? Just above the part where there's the the window door and the re-roof i'm assuming the re-roof doesn't mean re-shingling it actually means re-roofing and Correct. and then the window door what, what does that speak to like i can't replace my own door without paying the city 150 dollars is that uh, you can as long as you don't change the framing. Okay. So truly just replacing the door. Yes, mm -hmm. you can. same with windows. You can replace your windows without getting a building permit. Um, but you can't change the size of the window and your structural framing without getting a building permit. And just to be clear, what we have when we require a building permit and when we don't is not up to the city. It's actually based upon what the building code that the state of Idaho has adopted. Okay. So that's not um, up to our discretion. So what is up to our discretion is what we're charging for those services. Okay, thank you. Yeah. It seems arbitrary, but you know the reason why if Idaho State would require a permit to change the door so it's not just Idaho for whatever it's worth. It's um, actually a national standard. I mean, do you know why? Is it a safety? Is yes. It, or is it just yeah, it's it's rooted in the same reason we have any building permits. Okay. Yep, which is um, to ensure that um, it's done in accordance with the standards of the building code. Um, so that's what we're looking for. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what if an individual wants to put a door where a window is? Or that I know this is ridiculous, but it's like I got a building permit for my window. More questions. Ignorance is bliss. Sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. I, I would use what our, I don't know if Andy's on the phone. Is that, Andy's not on the phone tonight. Um, like our attorneys typically say, it depends, right? The yeah. devil's in the details. Okay. Um, but yes, typically, if there are structural changes, then yes, you need to have a building permit. Um, so uh, re inspection. That's above and beyond what would be normal. Um, temporary certificate of occupancy. This um, is common in other municipalities. Ours is actually very similar to Hayden's is what we're proposing. They have multiple different temporary certificates of occupancies. We've rolled it up into one. What that means is you might have some things where it's safe to open the building, but you have a few things left of your permit conditions, like a sidewalk, for example, that you need to get done. So before we give you your final certificate of occupancy, we can issue you a temporary one. It is additional burden, like administrative burden to do so. So um, that's what that fee is representing. Um, and then as far as our public right-of-way permits, um, this is substantially an overhaul. As you can tell, there is a lot of bold here. Um, 
A couple things to help clarify. We um, clarified what encroachment means. So sometimes you're just using our right of way for temporary access. So that permit is $70, where it used to be 50. However, you might have a long-term encroachment in our right of way, and that takes more of a legal review and a legal agreement. So that fee is um, substantially more than it is if we're just reviewing a traffic control plan, for example. As far as public infrastructure goes, um, this is, we've created two categories, minor and major. So minor is if you're doing sidewalk work, curb, street, or driveway. And that's really to capture costs associated with us doing a site visit before the work, during the work, um, and if necessary, after the work and processing the application. The major uh, public infrastructure is the engineering side of the reviews that go with a lot of the building and planning type of um, permit applications that we get. So I'm not going to read every line there. I will wait for questions on that. And then I'm going to scroll down the green that you see um, here is primarily our water and sewer fees. This was also an overhaul on the structuring. We now provide more opportunities for private contractors to do work that we've previously done. Um, and so we have provided pricing for fees associated with that. So we will continue to always provide the meter that we use to determine usage and the transponder that goes with that and we'll install it. In the past, the meter fees that you see here have also include us tapping the main and actually doing the connection, the service connection. That now is more often than not going to be on a private contractor. So a homeowner can hire a private contractor, the code that was previously adopted this year provide some qualifications that have to go with that. Not just anybody can tap our water main. Um, but in that case, um, most of the time they'll pay the meter and transponder only fees. There might be a unique situation where if we have the time and the resources available, that we might still do the actual meter assembly complete. So they can still tap the main, do the line to it, but we'll do the full yoke and assembly that goes with it. So those fees we have kept the same. So the city is not doing the hot taps anymore. There might be conditions when we do, but more often than not, we will allow a contractor to now do it. Were those fees reduced because of that? Yes, they were reduced because of that. Really, it boils down to us having the resources to focus on maintenance and allowing private industry to handle new connections and new construction to free us up to stay on top of our maintenance. So that's where we have, if the city's gonna do the main tap, we have a flat fee for that at the 465. That's based on us renting the equipment to do the tap itself and having, um, it's typically a three to four man crew to do that. Now, if we allow a contractor to do it, we still have to inspect it. So we have to be there when they're doing it, but that's one person inspecting for a short amount of time versus our, you know, half of a day potentially being consumed. Doing so that it goes from what to what? It's really not a comparison like that because it used to be wrapped into these other connection fees. So for example, a three quarter inch meter assembly of $800 used to include tapping the main, connecting and providing the yoke assembly and the meter and the transponder. Now, it's just $800 for the meter assembly and you hire a private contractor to do it. If you need us to do it and we have the time and the resources, we would charge you the $800 plus the $465 plus any additional labor equipment or materials that we needed to do the work, which is actually relatively consistent with the past because our previous fees that were listed in our fee structure were only deposits. And then we would actually bill out later the actual costs. So it's not really a good apples to apples comparison of saying it used to be this and now it's this. Does that make sense? However, I will also say it's cleaner and easier, I feel like, because often what our main taps are is like if you have a new main connecting to an existing main, we could come out and do that work and that fee would be the 465. There is some simplicity in it, even though I made it sound complicated. 
Um, our new user facility fees haven't changed. Um, in fact, no utility rates have changed at all. These are our fees instead. Um, we are by DEQ required to issue industrial pretreatment wastewater discharge permits. We have been doing that. Um, we are establishing a fee now to process those applications. We only have four within the city um, and they're all existing and our code that will be coming to you in the near future proposes that if you're an existing user, that fee is not applicable to you. So this would be for any new users. And then last but not least, the watershed <laughs> new use activity fee uh, of 480. So as part of our watershed management plan, um, we are going to be coming to um, council to propose a new application process for if you want to have a use or an activity within the watershed, that it's a it's potentially allowable based upon a permit process. So you come to us and say, I would like to have a new zip line in the watershed. We would ask for, and that's what will be coming to council of what we're asking you for. Here we're asking you for all of these things. Here we're reviewing it, processing it, um, and eventually approving it or not approving it. This new fee is in the anticipation of that code coming to council or that process and policy coming to council um, in September. And then the sewer fees, um, we have established an inspection fee for the sewer mains. We have historically not had that. Um, so we were inspecting new sewer connections and not charging a fee for that. Um, and then we provided um, fees to assist with um, new sewer connections and or new sewer mains. And that would be per our rates that were provided up above. So with that, I will open it up for any questions. Okay. I only have one question. Um, the sidewalk in Luffy, I didn't hear you speak to that. I think you must have scrolled past it pretty quickly. That's the same that was previously adopted by council. There's been no change to that. That's the $100 okay. per linear foot of frontage that was adopted in our revised uh, city code. Okay, so that's what they have to pay per foot per linear foot again. Okay. All right. Um, I just couldn't remember back to the sidewalk stuff. We've had so many discussions on it. So, okay. Thank you. No problem. Any mm -hmm. other questions? All right. Guess not. That, was, that must have been a phenomenal presentation. <laughs> I don't know that I'd go that far, but thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> okay. All right. Is that it? That's all I have. That's all we have. Okay. Any more questions or comments, anyone? Mm -hmm. With that, this meeting is yes, adjourned. Oh, sorry. We do have an action item. Okay. Yes, we have to schedule this thing, don't we? I don't understand a motion to schedule a public hearing for council's regular meeting on Wednesday, September 2nd, to accept public testimony regarding the proposed new fees. An existing fee proposed, fees proposed to increase more than 5% of your motion. Mm -hmm. Moved seconded. and seconded to the roll call. Councilman Darling? Yes. Councilwoman McAllister? Yes. Councilwoman Williamson? Yes. Councilman Grove? Yes. Councilman Sparrow? Yes. Councilwoman Rule? Yes. Motion passes and this meeting adjourned. Thank you, Melissa.